attributed to its improvement. With these miniaturized transceivers, many husband and wife amateurs find it easy to keep in touch no matter where they are. Did you ever wonder how parade coordinators keep their parades coordinated? Well, in parades all across the country, volunteer hands use portable radios to relay information from the parade route back to the officials, so decisions are made faster and the parades run more smoothly. And recently, the Rose Parade got a new service, amateur television. With video cameras and amateur transmitters, the ham operators enable the parade officials to see firsthand the crucial areas of the route. If any float has trouble, like making a turn, for instance, the parade coordinators spot the problem on their monitor and know what kind of help is needed. Tom, your picture's beginning to come in now. Now, of course, hams have been experimenting with television since before television. Snow free, great picture. Gail Hauk is about to be visited by the Tom O'Hara family 30 miles away via amateur television. Uh, something else I'd like to show you is Kelly's uh, new trophy she got for motorcycle racing. So, yeah, here's Kelly in the uh, trophy. It's almost as big as she is. Um, she got first place in her class. Well, that's fine, Kelly. Congratulations. That's a beautiful trophy. Hey, Dale, Ricky's uh, at the computer here, and he's getting to be quite a hot shot at uh, this target game where he's shooting down spaceships. Another rich and, uh, source of experimentation is the personal computer. These gadgets can do millions of things, including send and receive Morse code at any speed you want. And uh, even balance my checkbook once in a while. With these miniaturized transceivers, your range increases as your altitude increases. Even with low power, communications are reliable for over a hundred miles when you're well off the ground. Consequently, hams have repeaters, automatic relay stations, high atop buildings, mountains, television towers. And these repeaters listen for signals and then retransmit them from their lofty perch. When relayed by a repeater, a small one-watt radio like this has the same range as much higher-powered units. I haven't talked with you in quite a while. If you want a repeater that really covers some territory, try putting it 500 miles up. This is Oscar 8, an amateur satellite, in its final testing stage. There are two transponders on board. One of them was built by a group in Japan, the Japanese AMSAT group. One was built by the AMSAT group in Washington. The Germans built the battery charge regulators and the Canadians built some of the control circuitry. And it's really an international effort. It takes a lot of work from a lot of people to complete a project like this. But it's worth it because with amateur satellites, AMS have reliable long-range communications using small antenna and less power than an average light bulb. And when the first Oscar satellite was launched into orbit, it was another noteworthy success added to an already long list of amateur radio achievements. Juliet uh, Bravo Kilo, this is Japan, uh, Yokohama number one, Juliet Yankee one. Uh, I'm receiving you. Not only is amateur radio a hobby of vast technical diversity, it's an avocation which attracts people from every walk of life and level of society. And, uh, my complete call sign is Juliet Yankee number one, just the two letters and the one number. Uh, my handle is Hussein, hotel, uniform, Sierra, Sierra, Echo India November, and the QTH is just northwest of Amman, Alpha, Mike. This Mike, is King Hussein of Jordan, one of the best known amateur radio operators in the world. The ham with whom he's talking doesn't realize he's talking to a king, but most hams do know who belongs to the call sign JY1. Bye bye and all the very best of seven, please. I built a key 
Kilo to Oscar Charlie, DK to Oscar Charlie. Delta Kilo to Oscar Charlie, this is Japan, uh, you, Yankee 1, Juliet Yankee 1. Uh, good afternoon to you, my friend, 5 by 9, go. Okay, we'll find your majesty, your fires and blue likewise, into West Berlin. West Berlin is a location, and my name is Uli, United London, Italy. We work here, sell my whiskey Alpha 3, Hotel United, Papa, and we're running an ICOM 701, a solid killer, with linear amplifier behind, and the antenna is a TH-60, excites up about 225 feet. JY-1, DK-2, Oscar Charlie. DK2 Oscar Charlie, Roger, uh, my good friend, uh, thank you very much indeed. You have a very solid signal into uh, the QTH near Amman, the capital city of Jordan, 5-9 plus. And we're operating the Tango Romeo 7 transceiver by Drake and the L4B linear amplifier. And uh, my KSL manager is Whiskey Alpha 3, Honolulu, United Pacific, and this is Hussein, wishing you all the very best of 7-3s. King Hussein not only enjoys ham radio personally, he has implemented creative uses of ham radio in his country's schools. CQ, CQ, CQ. Japan, Yankee 5, Hotel, Hotel, Florida, calling CQ 15. CQ, CQ. These young ladies yeah, comprise yeah. this year's amateur radio class at the Al Hussein Secondary School for Girls. In addition to good operating practices, these students are taught Morse code and international regulations. With this modest station, both teachers and students enjoy communicating with other hands all over the world. This international communication not only polishes operating skills, but sharpens understanding of foreign customs and lifestyles. I believe that uh, as far as amateur radio is concerned, it's, it's a way of uh, bringing people together uh, throughout the world. It's um, an interest that um, enhances the creativity of young people and uh, their knowledge of uh, electronics. It creates uh, tremendous opportunities in so many fields and so many areas. It's somehow appropriate that here, in Jordan, one of the first areas of the Earth inhabited by intelligent man, a creative use of amateur radio is helping develop this nation's scientific community. But ham radio is more than a worldwide reservoir of technical talent. It's fun, and often hams get together in person. For example, at a convention in San Diego, sponsored by the American Radio Relay League. It's a chance to see all the latest equipment, hear speakers on a variety of topics, and have eyeball contacts with friends you've made on the air. One of the most enjoyable activities in the hands year is field day. It's a sort of 24-hour operating marathon organized by the American Radio Relay League. The major feature of field day is that every ham station participating in the contest is using emergency type power, batteries, generators, solar cells, you name it. The key to putting out a big signal is a good antenna. This field day operation running less than 10 watts was the top winner in a recent competition. It's lots of fun to see how many other stations you can contact, but the big benefit is emergency preparedness. With field day, every ham in the country can practice his skills under simulated emergency conditions. When the ground gave way at Laguna Beach, California, dozens of homes were damaged or destroyed. With the phone lines down, two-way radio was the only way to get messages into and out of the disaster area. Dozens of amateurs took off work to help their neighbors. They used their repeater's auto patch, an automated telephone patching system, to let victims reassure worried relatives that they were okay. The hams also relayed thousands of messages for the Red Cross and other groups aiding the victims. Sometimes hams become heroes and make headlines. The story of WD6FFV was front page news and the subject of television news reports. This morning, 13-year-old Californian Mike Davis saved the lives of three persons aboard a sinking boat in the Caribbean. He did it by relaying the boat's distress signal.